When I started a new project in the getting started with Wappler video, Wappler created a default page called index.html. While the index page was being created, we saw a number of messages stating that frameworks had been added to the page. The added frameworks are jQuery, Font Awesome, Bootstrap, and AppConnect. jQuery is a JavaScript library and is a requirement when using Bootstrap. For Wappler users, there is no need to know more than that jQuery exists on all Bootstrap pages. There are a number of jQuery versions available for Wappler. In my experience, it is best to stay with the default CDN version. The next major version of Bootstrap will no longer use the jQuery framework. Font Awesome gives you scalable vector icons that can instantly be customized on size, color, drop shadow, and anything that can be done with the power of CSS. Again, there are a number of choices to include Font Awesome in the page. In my opinion, the best choice is to stay with the default CDN version. I will devote a separate video on using Font Awesome. Bootstrap. Who hasn't heard of Twitter Bootstrap? Yet again, there are multiple choices to add Bootstrap to your page, and again I suggest that you stay with the default version, which in this case is the local version. Using the local version rather than the CDN version allows us to use the theme manager to create our own theme. Being a large and diverse topic, a number of separate videos will be devoted to Bootstrap CSS and components. Lastly, we come to App Connect. This is a client-side JavaScript framework similar to React, Angular and Vue.js. There is only one version available which is installed locally for each project and linked to on each page within the project. So, what is AppConnect? According to the Wappler documentation, the AppConnect framework sets Wappler apart from the pack. AppConnect allows you to do almost anything you can think of from a client-side perspective, and not only that but it is also what connects your client-side and server-side creating the ideal partnership. So, where does AppConnect fit into the whole scheme of things? This is better explained using a flow diagram. The browser accepts the HTML document and uses a parser to create the document object model tree. The same goes for the CSS document which is parsed to create the CSS object model tree. In most web applications there is also a JavaScript file which goes through a JavaScript interpreter. The main purpose of JavaScript is to manipulate both of the object models. This is where AppConnect comes into play. AppConnect is a JavaScript framework and works in the same manner as any other JavaScript. After the object models have been created, the XSIM and DOM trees are combined into a render tree, which is then used to compute the layout of each visible element and serves as an input to the paint process that renders the pixels to screen. Without going too deep into the workings of a browser, at this stage it suffices to say that all of the manipulation of the object models occurs within the browser without having to reload the main document from the server. To demonstrate the how and why the frameworks are used. I will first remove the said frameworks. When I now want to add elements to the page, I see a very much diminished number of options. The available options are all HTML elements. This is okay, most HTML editors are restricted to these options. I can create a workable static page using these options. I can even add styling using the design panel or by going to the styles panel. I can add more elements by going to the DOM panel. Although it may be satisfying to create a page in this manual manner, it requires a thorough knowledge of HTML and CSS. I'll now install Bootstrap so that we can see the difference. Notice that, when I added Bootstrap, jQuery and Font Awesome were also added to the page. This is because Bootstrap components require jQuery and Wappler's version of Bootstrap, specifically form validation, requires Font Awesome. Nothing has changed regarding the elements on the page. This is because none of the Bootstrap classes have been added to the elements on the page. I'll remove the elements and create a similar layout using the Bootstrap options. In the dialog that opens, note the BS4 label for each of the options. First I will add a bootstrap navigation bar followed by the main element and a footer.
Inside the main element, I follow the bootstrap rules which means that I need to add a row and columns. Notice how I can now resize the first column. This is how I can continue to develop a static website. As an example I go to the static demo portfolio site. Here I see the site that was created by the Wappler team. Notice that it does not contain App Connect. So, why does Wappler include App Connect? To answer this, I will open the demo dynamic real estate site. If I turn the preview mode on, and choose the minimum number of bedrooms, we see a change in the page. No page refresh is explained in the flow chart. That is app connect at work and is a demonstration of what makes Wappler stand out in the pack. Lastly, I want to show you two settings that are required for app connect to work correctly. The first is the ID of the app. This can be anything to your liking. I will set this to index. The second setting is app root. This can be the body element or the page, otherwise known as the HTML element. Wappler defaults to body. This is okay for most applications though, if there are dynamic values for the title, description and or other tags within the header element, the app root will need to be placed at the page level. That is it for this video, I hope it has been useful. My name is Ben Plesier and, as usual, I will place important links below.